hello and welcome back to your weekly witch fix and uh, today we'll be looking at a film that i have actually watched voluntarily twice before so you know it's better than some of the other ones that i've sat through for this podcast this film is called the initiation of sarah and it's from abc family it was actually a remake of a film that was released in 1978 but bears quite a, a lot of differences to the original so we'll go over that in a moment I actually found this film in one of two ways, I honestly can't remember. I either found it because I was looking for a film about witches and saw that it had my name in the title and therefore watched it, or I found it because I googled my full name, which I do do occasionally because I want to see if people are writing about my books, and the reason it would have come up is because I share the full name of the main character in this movie, which is probably why I watched it. Now, uh, the original film released in 1978 had a sort of similar plot line with a couple of differences. And the main difference is that the titular character, Sarah, was psychic in the 70s film and is a witch in the more modern incarnation that was made in 2006. So I'll be looking at the remake instead of the original because technically in the original there wasn't a witch. The plot of the initiation of Sarah starts with two sisters, Sarah and Lindsay, who are played by Mika Borum and Summer Glau, respectively, and they are joining Temple Hill University as freshmen. Now, their mother is played by Morgan Fairchild, who you might remember as being Chandler's mother in Friends, but she was also in the original 70 version of the film. And she drives them to university and points out her old sorority, which is Alpha Nu. Alpha Nu's current president, Corrine, Joanna Garcia, is kind of a flicky haired, poor man, Sarah Michelle Geller, meaning that she probably costs less than Sarah Michelle Geller, but that doesn't mean that her acting is worse. She's actually very good and basically probably one of the best parts of this film because she's just so undeniably bitchy and fun to look at when she's sort of snapping at people and just being generally a bit of a cow. When they arrive at the university, Alpha Nu is very interested in getting Sarah and Lindsay to join. The president was featured in in the flashback at the start of the film in an occult ritual where she tried to sacrifice a sort of screaming blonde young woman with a big knife and the knife would not cut down into the woman because apparently she was not the one and the one needs to be sacrificed with this big knife to feed the eternal flame which is worshipped by the women at Alpha Nu. Out of Sarah and Lindsay, Lindsay is the one desperate to fit in at Alpha Nu. She wants to be popular and normal and blonde and shiny. Uh, whereas Sarah is alternative and you can tell this because she listens to rock music and wears leather bracelets and she's not particularly keen on joining the Alpha Nu sorority and it's from this that the tension between the two sisters starts to spiral. There's also another sorority on campus called Pi Epsilon Delta and they are also fairly witchy and occult seeming but they're headed by Jennifer Tilly who is a professor with a doctorate and that's probably the least believable thing in this film because Jennifer Tilly doesn't sound like she has a doctorate and I'm aware that's stereotyping wildly but watch the film and you'll see where that's coming from. The two sororities are engaged in sort of a battle for power between good and evil and these two sisters kind of enter into that and in the end end up picking sides and kind of fighting for their respective sorority. It's not what I would call the best of films. The dialogue can be a bit laughable and the special effects would be at home on a sci-fi original movie. It kind of reminds me of earlier episodes of Charmed and Buffy, specifically that episode of Buffy from one of the first seasons where she and Cordelia get invited to a frat party and that frat worships a snake demon. It's basically that, but as a movie. Having said that, it is at least coherent and the plot kind of makes sense. So when you get to the end, there is definitely a conclusion. Aside from Jennifer Tilly and Summer Glau, another notable actress to mention is Tessa Thompson, who you probably saw recently in Thor Ragnarok. She's also pretty impressive. And again, you can't really take her, your eyes off of her when she's playing Corrine's slightly downtrodden second demon. There's quite a lot of humour in the film, quite a lot of comedy that's actually meant to be there. And it comes off as a camp romp of a film that you could comfortably watch at a pizza party with some friends. It's not incredibly serious, but there's enough 
of a captivating performance in many of the actresses who are in it to make you want to keep watching and some of the magic is kind of cool i have to admit i particularly like um, a scene which is sort of towards the end where the two sororities are holding their initiation rituals and it kind of goes back and forth between the two kind of juxtaposing them against each other and i think that's quite nice now i've had a look around and you can buy this film on amazon and ebay as i buy everything but it is quite expensive on ebay uh, on amazon i think it's between five and ten pounds depending on where you get your copy from the whole film has however been uploaded to youtube by a user called get movie 007 and it's been on there since 2014 so it's probably going to hang around if you want to go and have a look at it I'm going to give content warnings for this film because self-harm is mentioned and you do see some self-harm marks. Essentially, Sarah has uh, various scars up and down her arms from self-harm previous to the start of the film. And I don't think you see her do it on screen at any point. But I thought I'd mention that in case it's potentially triggering for anybody. Something that vaguely amused me about this film is that... Finn, who is the love interest for Sarah, who's this kind of dorky guy who she meets at a library. Uh, he is a virgin and to save him from virgin sacrifice, Sarah makes the, the noble decision to sleep with him, which I thought was quite a funny inversion of the trope, even if it isn't particularly original, because in horror films it tends to be sort of the girl who falls for the guy and then in the midst of danger they somehow find time to do it. But um, it's quite funny to me that they changed that around. With relation to the original version of the film, I've never actually seen it. It's also on YouTube, so I may give it a watch at some point. But like I said, it's not actually about a witch. It also apparently doesn't have the kind of happy ending that this film has. It's not as pizza party friendly as this one would be. For example, apparently the ending of the original has Sarah not ending up with her love interest and she dies at the end. So... That seems to be more of a downer. Judging from the reviews that you can see for the remake of the film, there does seem to be a consensus that it isn't as good as the original. But I'm reviewing this one because it actually has witches in it. However, if you want to maybe watch a film that is mostly decreed better by most people on the internet, you might want to give the original a look-see. So what magical lessons can be drawn from the initiation of Sarah? I have to be honest, I haven't really drawn many magical lessons from the other films that I've watched, but I think this one has one, or just a general life lesson, which is to definitely be careful what crowd you fall in with. And I think that's very true, especially in pagan circles where people join groups, and everyone I think has a story of groups that they've joined where there's been people who make them feel uncomfortable or who perhaps want them to work sky clad when they're not entirely comfortable with that. And yes, sometimes there have been reports of people setting up so-called pagan groups in order to exploit children, which isn't very pleasant and unfortunately happens in a lot of different cultures and a lot of different religions. And it's something that paganism isn't a place where we're safe from that, unfortunately. There's also obviously pagan events that people go to where the drink is flowing and people are camping and horrible things do happen to people. And it's a shame that all communities have people in them who would take advantage of situations like that. I think this film kind of reminds me of that because especially Lindsay, she falls in with the wrong crowd and she just wants to be popular and she just wants to be liked by them. But she ends up doing a lot of things that make her uncomfortable and that aren't in her best interests in the end. So that's something to keep in mind. It's also worth thinking about the teachers and responsible elders that you have. I'm solitary myself, so I've never really had to deal with this, but there have been stories that I've picked up from other people about teachers who took them for a ride in terms of money or in terms of just generally not teaching them everything that they said that they could and genuinely not being what they presented themselves as. And it's very similar to this film because Jennifer Tilly, for all that she may not look like a doctoral candidate, is a good teacher to Sarah and teaches her how to control and use her magic. Whereas Morgan Fairchild's character, Sarah's mother, 
isn't so loving or understanding. I think it's also a reminder that we can sort of pick our own families, especially when we get to go away to places of higher education or just when we move away from our families. A lot of people are in the broom closet living at home. A lot of people have to hide their witchiness or have been, as uh, Sarah has been, picked on for being strange or different. And what's strange and different in lower school or in small towns may not be as strange and different once you get to university or to a larger city. So that's also worth remembering if you're a young person who's picked up this film to watch at a sleepover. I think you could get a, quite a lot out of it in terms of those lessons that I've just described. I do genuinely enjoy The Initiation of Sarah and it is one of those guilty pleasure type films that you watch. For instance, I also like the film Nancy Drew and that is largely terrible. But it is something that you can kind of pop on on a Sunday when you're not feeling too well and just kind of listen to because you kind of want to nap but you also kind of want to watch television. It's also a film about witchcraft that I can watch with my mum because no one gets their tits out and writes on them in blood, which I'm always quite grateful for in terms of the content that I try and watch in the house when they're here. So I would recommend picking it up, especially if you're a fan of series like Charmed and Buffy in the sort of the good old original seasons when Prue was there. And it kind of watches like that. It's very nostalgic. It kind of feels 90s-ish, even though it's set in 2006. And you could do a lot worse in terms of quality of plot and dialogue, as we have discovered together on this podcast. I hope you've enjoyed this review. And please do remember you can get in touch via Twitter at Witchfix and by email witchfixpodcast at gmail.com. Let me know if there are any films that you'd like me to have a look at or books, comics, etc. And I'll do my best to get around to them as soon as I can. I hope to see you all in the next episode. Bye. Bye.